Hello and welcome to another episode of Frank Codes. It is June 10th and yesterday Apple released their new Apple Intelligence Foundation model. This is a full AI large language model that runs on your own local hardware, on your iPhones, your iPads, Macs, uh, Vision? I guess it works on Vision? We'll have to try that too at some point, huh? Unlike Google, OpenAI, Anthropic, na name your favorite cloud AI model provider, it runs on your own hardware using your own GPU, your own neural engine, whatever, whatever you've bought. There's no need to have an internet connection so it can upload data to a server and get a response back from that server. It's all running locally on your own hardware. This is awesome. For years, I've been a proponent of using your own data, your own machines, your own hardware to run neural networks. And now Apple's made it easy to run what I hope is a pretty sophisticated model. This means that your data is secure by default. Nothing is transmitted to Apple. Having your data local means it's secure by default. You don't have to worry about your information being used by others for any purpose at all. It's just your data on just your hardware. Mm, chef's kiss. But the question is, is it any good? <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter how secure it is if it's not useful at all. So today, I want to put it through some tests. I've devised a set of very um, hmm, unscientific tests just to get a feel for this model, just so that we can see what is it capable of and what is it not capable of. So I have a few key areas I want to test out. Number one, can it tell me a story? Why not? I want to see, is, does, can it be creative at all? And then let's put it through some technical paces. Can it draw an SVG? This is, you know, like an XML based graphics file. It, this is a very hard test for any neural networks. I'm just, I, and it's a test I love to run, honestly. So we'll, we'll just run through that, see if it can generate some images. Does it know facts? Number three. Uh, this is just important. If you want to use this thing to help you with your homework or if you just want to look up some information very quickly, let's find out what facts it knows and perhaps what facts it doesn't know. And lastly, most importantly, can it code? Can I use this thing to vibe code? That's really, I, I'm really curious about that because that will open up a whole new uh, level of IDEs where you're not paying per token. You just have your neural network running on your hardware, writing code for you for free, if you ignore the cost of the hardware that you purchased. So anyway, I hope you will stay tuned and let's do some experiments. But first, we need to write a quick experimental app. So to start, we have to download Xcode 26. Everything's a 26 now, Xcode 26 beta. Now to run a model, we need to import a library called foundation models. Perfect. Now that we have our basic app template here, we can start creating a view and I will call it an experiment view. And in order to run a model, we need a session object, which is a language model session. We'll just create that right there for the moment. And we shall make the session private also. We'll just run a new session for each of the experiments. And then let's start with some simple instructions. Oops. Uh, you are an advanced storyteller. 
you tell wise tales that are entertaining and also enlightening. Why not? Is that a word? <laughs> I guess we don't need the multi-line puppy here. So there we go. Oh, I just realized we also need um, another little UI thing. Well, let's do an, a little button to tell it to run. <laughs> run. Great. So now we have our basic app here. Now this is actually very simple. All we have to do is say session dot respond to and then our prompt. And actually I'm going to make this a public variable so that we can set it up here. Tell a very, very short sci-fi story. And responding requires that we check for errors, and it also requires some async code. Because it requires async code, we'll put it into a task. And now because it can fail, we have to check those results. But if the results succeed, we can simply say output, output is equal to the result content. Nice and easy. Let's even put an else case here. Oh no, something went wrong. And you can of course add much better error handling here. So sadly, it doesn't look like these models work inside of the simulator. So we will have to switch over to the device to find out if it's working or not. In order to run Apple Intelligence Networks, you'll first have to enable Apple Intelligence on the device. It's pretty easy. You just hit that little toggle switch and then you're gonna have to wait a little bit for the neural network to be downloaded. Once it's downloaded, you are all set to go. So now that we have it, let's press the play button in Xcode and see what happens. And there it is, our very beautiful app, uh, all set to go. Gosh, sure is ugly. Anyway, let's press the run button. And if we wait and wait and wait, we should put a little spinner at least. And there we go. There is our beautiful short story. So this puppy's working. All right. Now to improve this experiments app, let's create a set of experiments. So we will create a struct, an experiment struct. And we will have a title for it. Let's have the overall instructions. And then let's have a list of prompts that we can try out. Good. And now let's create a set of experiments. So now when I click one of these buttons, it should take us to the story generator. 
and then we can run the run button. And again, sadly, nothing works inside of the canvas here. So let's deploy this to the app and uh, see what happens here. And we'll hit run. We get our little spinner running. Spin, spin, spin. Now, Apple does have a streaming API so that you can do better than just show a little spinner. You can actually show the text as it's being filled in. And perhaps we'll work on that feature. But for now, let's just sit here for the spinner. And there we have it, a brand new story. Echoes of Andromeda. In the year 2147, humanity had spread across the stars, establishing colonies. I, I won't do that voice anymore. So that was our science fiction story. Let's try a lullaby. And here we have our little lullaby. <laughs> oh, it even made it rhyme. Hush now, my darling, close your eyes tonight. Dream of gentle rivers and moonlit skies so bright. Stars are twinkling softly, weaving tales untold in the garden of dreams where wonders unfold. Okay, it can rhyme. Pretty good. And here we are back in the uh, IDE. I did not set the session correctly. So let's fix this code. When we create the session, we should be providing these instructions. So let's fix this code. And here we are back in the app. I'm very excited because we put in the bug fix and now the language model should be responding to our instructions. Let's go for it. I'm nervous. I really want to see the SVG generator succeed. So there's our instructions, which it should understand our prompt, a desert scene with a cactus and a hot sun, run. Oh, I'm excited now because yeah, it was responding with nonsense before because we weren't giving it good instructions. We weren't giving it a good system prompt. Now we are giving it a good system prompt. That is totally my fault. I, my bad. <laughs> but now we get to see what its default output is. And spin, spin, spin. Keep my hopes up, my dreams alive. Please, puppy, please generate SVG text. Oh, and there we have it, bravo. We have achieved <laughs> a bunch of sun rays. <laughs> oh, I, I really should have baked in a little renderer here. Uh, and it seems to have um, just gotten a little bit stuck generating sun rays. <laughs> so we'll call that a, a mostly passing one. Let's try a different SVG. A blue house on a windswept snowy field. Ah, but there we go. We got it. We got a canvas, a house, a roof, a chimney, and then a snowy field. And it was actually able to complete the SVG path this time. Now this took about, oh, I'd say about a minute to generate. So I think I had a little bit trouble uh, generating this snowy field path, and I apologize that we didn't bother to write a render here. Might add that in a moment, but I am just happy to see that with our bug fix, it's actually listening to our instructions and generating SVG. Very good. One last one, just because I have to know, can it generate a spaceship flying through space? Oh, and there we go. It looks like a bright white spaceship with some wings and a trail. <laughs> uh, it looks like a black and white image. Hilarious. Uh, again, apologies for not rendering it, but I'm just happy to see it's at least trying to generate SVG text. Now that we've seen with the bug fixes, it's actually generating SVG code. 
Let's go back to our vibe code generator and see if it's able to write the apps that we want. Now we already tested the BMI, so let's try to generate the tip calculator app. And here we go, here is our tip calculator. Beautiful. It looks like it just put in um, two simple input boxes because we didn't really constrain it very much. But the math all looks fine. And it did it with a submit button click. So that, that looks fine to me. For, it was very underspecified what I wanted. Um, it'd be good to add more flexibility and actually have it, um, you know, um, um, able to modify the code after I ask it for changes. But we're just trying to get a feel for the neural network today. We're not trying to write an advanced IDE or anything. So I'm happy with that. Let's try our last one. I need an expense tracker. This one's a little bit harder. I'm really curious how it's going to handle the three people. And there we go. We have our HTML. Uh, it has a single form, which is the expense name, the expense amount, add the expense, and then a table of the expenses. Oh, look at that. That's nice. It's going to build up a list of variables for all the UI elements it needs access to. And then whenever anyone clicks the add expense button, it's going to augment the table by adding a row with the expense name, the expense amount. Always puts the date as today. Hilarious. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just going to list it out in the table. It's not going to, it's not doing any summation or anything. But again, I didn't request that yet. Um, I, I was a little too vague with my app description here. But that's an HTML app. That, that does something. That's interactive. So in conclusion, I would say out of our experiments, story generation, fine. I, I, I don't want to say excellent because... You know, my life wasn't changed by any of those stories, but I also asked it for short stories. So, you know, what, what, what do you expect out of a bad prompt like that? But I am happy with its generative capacity in that regard. And of course, you can change things like temperature to uh, make it a little more random, a little less random uh, with the kind of variety of stories it would generate. Then the SVG uh, generator. I think the images it was generating were pretty basic. Uh, just by reading the code, it's hard to imagine SVG in your head. They were a little basic. And it failed at the um, a desert scene with a cactus in the hot sun because it spent all of its time trying to draw sun rays. And it got a little bit lost in that cycle. For facts, uh, I'm sticking with a B. Um, I asked for the molecular formula of MSG and it forgot the sodium, it's mono, mono glutamate, monosodium glutamate, something like that. And it forgot the sodium, it's right in the name. Uh, so I'm going to go with a fail for the MSG, I'm going to give it an 80% on facts. Uh, finally for the code generator, uh, yeah, um, I'm going to give it a pass. Uh, I don't know. In the, in the ABC grading system, I'll give it a B, maybe a C. They were very basic apps. It definitely didn't go out of its way to make a great app for me. Uh, it worked. It, it totally did its job. In conclusion, what I want to say is this network is good. Yeah, it's not great. It's not fantastic. It's not world shattering. It's definitely good enough, especially given the pros. The pros are you are not paying per token. You do not require your users to have an account on some random service. You're not uploading information to someone else's random server out there. I think the pros greatly, greatly outweigh the cons. And I want to applaud Apple for getting this puppy baked into the operating system. And I hope everyone will turn that feature on in settings so that app developers such as myself can take advantage of this new neural network.